What's new in Cisco APIC? Confirmation and summary screens. Some of the wizards now include a confirmation screen and a summary screen as the last steps. On the confirmation screen, you'll see a list of the policies that the wizard will create. You can change the names of the policies if necessary. For example, go to Tenants and select a tenant. Then Quick Start and Multi-Tier Application. Click Configure Multi-Tier. Fill out the fields of each screen of the wizard as appropriate. On the confirmation screen, you can change the policy names if necessary. Click Finish to continue. After the confirmation screen is a summary screen, which shows you the policies that the wizard created. You can no longer change the policy's names, but you can edit the properties of a policy. Click on the expansion icon next to any policy to edit the policy's properties. Bookmarks. You can now bookmark almost any page, which enables you to go back to that page easily by choosing the bookmark from your list of bookmarks. In previous releases, this feature was represented by a star icon and had more limited capability. Go to a page that you want to bookmark. Click the bookmark icon in the upper right of the pane. To use a bookmark, go to Manage Your Profile, Bookmarks, and choose a bookmark. You can remove all of your bookmarks by choosing Remove All Bookmarks. Default tab. You can make a tab be the favorite on that page. Whenever you navigate to that page, that tab will be the default tab that's displayed. This feature is enabled only for the tabs in the work pane. Click the star to the right of the tab name to make it the default tab. Click the star again to make the tab no longer the default. Support for multi-context apps. You can now run an app in multiple GUI screens or contexts. For example, you can run the app while looking at a tenant's application profiles and while looking at the tenant's contracts. Prior to 4.1, you could run an app only in one context. Switching to a different context would close the app. Simplified Contract EPG Configuration This release adds the EPG Communication tab. This tab enables you to create communication between two EPGs and to monitor which EPGs are communicating with one another through a contract and filters. Using this tab represents a simpler, faster way to set up a contract between EPGs. Go to Tenants, select a tenant, then click the EPG Communication tab. Click the plus sign in the work pane. Choose a contract in the Create EPG Communication dialog box. Under Provider EPG, click the plus sign and choose an EPG to be the Provider EPG. You can repeat this to choose multiple EPGs. And under Consumer EPG, click the plus sign and choose an EPG to be the Consumer EPG. You can repeat this too to choose multiple EPGs. New Alerts This release adds the following alerts. OSPF connectivity is down. This alert lists the interfaces that have OSPF configured but aren't able to communicate with one another and provides a recommended troubleshooting action. Leaf is inactive. This alert warns you that a leaf switch became inactive, powered down, or disconnected. Node must be reloaded. This alert warns you that an SSD must be reformatted and repartitioned. New switch discovered. This alert informs you when a new switch is discovered. Process crash. This alert warns you that a process has crashed. Three tier topology. This release adds a tier two leaf layer, which enables you to create a multi-tier ACI fabric topology that corresponds to the three tier core aggregation XS architecture that is common in data center network topologies. 
This feature enables you to use the three-tier architecture without needing to re-cable and make other costly rack changes to support the two-tier ACI architecture. Go to Fabric, Inventory, Fabric Membership, and Registered Nodes. Click Action and then Create Fabric Node Member. Fill in the fields as required, put a check in the Tier 2 Leaf checkbox, and click Submit. Click Nodes Pending Registration. You can see the Tier 2 Leaf switch. Object Store Browser Improvements The Object Store Browser has a new modernized look and feel. You can now search by class, distinguished name, or URL instead of only class and distinguished name. After you find an object, you can make the object a favorite, which enables you to go to your list of favorites and load the object from there. And you can now view the JSON response of your last query. Previously, you could only view the XML response. Object Store Browser, by default, displays all of the properties, even those that have no value. You can hide the properties that don't have a value. You can also navigate the distinguished name using the breadcrumbs, which is simpler and easier to use. And you can now only view a distinguished name's stats, faults, or health if there is applicable data. Integrations tab. This release adds the Integrations tab, which enables you to view all third-party integrations. Currently, you can integrate APIC with Cisco UCS Manager and vManage. UCSM integration enables the APIC to automate networking policies on UCS devices, meaning that you can control your UCSM nodes using APIC. vManage integration enables tenant admins to apply pre-configured policies to specify the levels of packet loss, jitter, and latency for tenant traffic over the WAN. When a WAN SLA policy is applied to tenant traffic, the Cisco APIC sends the configured policies to a vManage controller. The vManage controller, which is configured as an external device manager that provides Cisco SD-WAN capability, chooses the best possible WAN link that meets the loss, jitter, and latency parameters specified in the SLA policy. Click Action, then Create Integration Group. Fill out the fields and click Submit.